If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember, relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. And welcome to the K Files this morning. Hey, Linda. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. You got a haircut? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I get a haircut so about every three months or so. I shave it all off. I, every three months. It looks yeah. like you wouldn't need need one. But well, uh, yeah, once I'm, a year. I've got a lot. I got a lot less hair now than I used to. Well, we want to thank our sponsors, Barnes Safety and Consulting, and you will learn a lot about that business this morning. Um, you will meet the owner and. Um, concealed carry instructor um, in person in just a few minutes and he's right gonna here answer, on the TV. He's going to answer all our questions. Yes, he is. And I want to thank Statewide Insurers Group also for sponsoring this show. Um, got a lot to get in today. Linda, yes. what's on tap for you? All and right. don't forget, we have um, up to, we pay up to $15,000, totally anonymous. 406-6736 is the hotline. Any cases that you see on this, on the reruns or anything, any cases you, anytime, yeah. call that number anytime. Um, and if you have the least little tip, we want to know about it. Right. Uh, some good news uh, right up front. Um, Sergeant Tinder with the Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office. Yes. Uh, it, uh, Sheriff Atkinson has agreed to, and, and, and Tinder's boss, uh, uh, Lieutenant Muse, that um, Tinder will start being a regular guest on the show on the oh, second, wow. second Thursday of each month. So second, so, so the second week of the month we have Edgecombe, third week of the month we have Rocky Mount PD, that's right. and Nash comes whenever we ask him to right. also. They do. Yeah. And, Lieutenant um, Jeff Sherrod. And, and so we had, you know, so, so, uh, Tinder will be talking about a lot of different stuff. Uh, one of one of the things, I mean, he is a homicide detective, but also he does um, he handles all the sex offenses mm -hmm. and all, and he maintains uh, track of all the sex offenders, so uh, registered sex offenders. So I imagine that'll mm -hmm. come into play also. So right. you know, whatever um, Edgecombe County needs, we're going to put that information out. Mm -hmm. All right, so. 
I said we'd do this last week, and so we're going to do it now. Um, this is one of the most uh, intriguing cases that I've ever written about in 20-something wow. years of writing about this stuff. Um, I wanted to know if you knew who this guy is. Uh, Brittany, can you put that there? Do you know who that is? Hmm. Looks familiar. He, yeah, uh, I, I think everybody looks like that an reaction. actor. He is. His name is Bill Duke, right? He okay. Is, um, he's got his start. Uh, remember the after school specials? Remember those? Oh remember? yeah. Uh, he was on an after school special, and then he was on an episode of Kojak. This was in the early 1970s. Right. So then he's he's acted in. 72 movies and TV shows, right? So I mean, wow, the guy that's is, pretty good. Exactly. Uh, he's best known for being in uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, Commando and Predator. And we got, there he is in Predator. That's, most people remember him like that. He most often uh, portrays law enforcement people, especially in, in his older career. Mm -hmm. And he was in an X-Men movie, which is, you know, really cool for me. Um, as a director, he I, this is something I did not know till the other day when I was looking, you know, looking him up and all that. Right. He's directed, uh, epi uh, he directed the movie Rage in Harlem with um, Eddie Murphy and a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, he, he's directed episodes of Dallas, Cagney and Lacey, Hill Street Blues, Miami Vice, 60 other television wow. shows. Wow. So, I mean, the guy's like Hollywood royalty, really, right? Okay, so... Uh, later in his in his life, he's he, as he's gotten older, he served on the board of trustees for the American Film Institute. Uh, he's a member of the California Film Commission, and he was appointed by uh, Schwarzenegger when he was governor. So I guess they met on the on pre well actually Commando, and then all right. So he's 77 years old. He's from Poughkeepsie, New York, right? Okay. So I d I wanted to establish who he was. Yes. And we're going to talk about his wife, right? He's, uh, he's married to uh, Sheila Moses. There they are at some Hollywood event, right? That's a, a publicity photo, so we can use those. Right. Um, all right, so he's married to Sheila P. Moses. She's a writer. She's been nominated for the National Book Award, all right? So um, she's pretty big deal herself, right? Right. So now we're, 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 we're finally getting down to what, what I'm talking about here. Uh, she grew up in small, rural, northeast, uh, Northampton County. Oh, really? In our, right, in, in, in your broadcast area, Northampton yeah. County. Yeah. Um, she grew up in the town of Rich Square, right? She was the, the, the... I know exactly where Rich Square is. She's the daughter of a family of 10 children, right? So it was a big family. Um, one of those brothers, 59-year-old Daniel Moses, right? So Daniel Moses, uh, he, he's her older brother. There's a, a picture of him back in the day. Um, he took her to the movies a lot when they were growing up, and he introduced her to Chinese food. He was the first person to ever take her to a Chinese restaurant, right? So now we're, we're well, getting... Well, they probably didn't have a lot of Chinese restaurants <laughs> in Ridge Square. Exactly, you know. exactly. So... They don't have a lot, and they got two stoplights. They don't have a whole Square. lot in Rich Square right. at all. Uh, so, so now mm. we're getting to it. So, Daniel Moses disappeared on June sixteenth, two thousand eleven. Right. Uh, his car, his motorcycle, are parked in the driveway. His credit cards haven't been used in all these years. Right. Um, they only realized that that Daniel Moses was missing because his house burnt down. So there was a house fire one afternoon, or that, that the afternoon of June 16th, there's a house fire. Police, re, I mean, police and firemen respond, deputies put the house fire out. Right. There's no body in there, right? They, they thought they'd find right. Daniel Moses' but body. no body. No body, so um, the stove was still on, right? And the air conditioner was running so they never were really able to determine whether the stove started the fire or the air conditioner started the fire. Wow. But they, and when I say air conditioner, I'm talking about like one of those old box units. Yeah, you know? yeah, so sure. So maybe a spark set the fire off or maybe it was the, the, the stove. The point is, is that Daniel Moses disappeared so fast that he didn't turn the stove off, he didn't turn the air conditioner off, right? He just disappeared. 
So, oh, um, that is really interesting that right. the stove was left on. Right, the stove was left on, exactly. The air condition, okay. The stove is another issue. Right. Okay, so uh, I know the first thing a lot of people are going to think about was is, is um, criminal activity, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Daniel Moses is a retired truck driver. He's got no known enemies and no criminal record, right? So this isn't this isn't That's some really sort of uh, criminal thing, right? Okay, so the people in Rich Square they knew him as the barbecue man because he was he, he was you know he always wanted to cook. He was always cooking. He would bring people food, you know, neighbors and stuff. Right. He would cook so much that he had to bring you know. Um, and his um, barbecue tools were left out on the grill like he was getting ready to cook something. Oh, so you this got a gets guy more that, airy. Right, you got a guy that, that leaves the box, the, the, the window box air conditioner on, and those things are always, I've written several stories about them causing house fires. Right. You know, especially the old, old, big, giant units. Right. All right, so he, the air conditioner is left on, the, um, the stove is left on, and the barbecue grill has got all his stuff out like he's getting ready to have a barbecue. And, mm. then, he, and then he just vanishes. Vehicles... Vehicle this still was in, in driveway. 2016. It, no, 2011. Oh, 11. Right. Sorry. Okay, so the day after the fire, everybody was looking for his dog that, that vanished at the same time he did. A day after the fire, his dog walks out of the woods. Oh. Without him, right? Comes back. So um, the reason I included who his family is, his sister and, and mm -hmm. her husband, is because. Uh, she had moved away from Rich Square, obviously, and yeah. and, and um, you know I think they they live they spend their time between Atlanta and Hollywood now. Right. But uh, she grew really frustrated with local law enforcement back then because she felt like they weren't doing enough, and um, the the State Bureau of Investigation became involved in the case after she went to the governor and said, you know, we need to do something about this, and the FBI hasn't. Uh, gotten involved in the case yet, uh, even though um, G.K. Butterfield has asked them to, they still haven't gotten involved in the case. Um, they say there's no jurisdictional issue for the FBI to be involved in. The sister says, I, I talked to her a couple times a few years ago, the sister says that there were some strange phone calls on Daniel Moses' phone to, to somewhere in Virginia, and she mm. thinks that that crosses the state lines, which if the FBI wanted to, they could get involved. Right. In, you know, so so um, last summer, deputies and FBI agents, they searched all the farms around Daniel Moses' house, and they were using cadaver dogs. They used a, a camera to go down and look inside a couple wells that mm -hmm. were, um, you know, on the properties trying to find him. And um, the the reason they may have not really looked into this case much in 2011, right, is the, the sheriff then had been sheriff for like 30 years, and he was kind of on, you know, on his last leg. Uh, there, he, I mean, this happened in the last year or so of his 30-year sheriff's run. Right. But then in 2013, his son, who was also a deputy at, New, uh, at, at Northampton, mm -hmm. uh, he was arrested in a federal drug sting right. along with some other folks. So they had some issues going on in the sheriff's office. They got a new sheriff now, Jack Smith, and um, you know, he's told me that they're doing everything they can to oh, find Oh, I, I know him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was with Nash County for a while. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they're doing everything they can to, to try to find him, but at this point, you know, he said that since 2011 that one of the detectives that worked the case has died. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them quit and one of them got fired. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a lot of turnover in, in these cases. And, and, right. and, you know, cases like this need um, uh, institutional awareness so that if one guy leaves, you know, the cases don't die with right. him. Right, absolutely. And, and so they have a problem with that. All right, so um, Governor Purdue put out a $10,000 reward for information for Mr. Moses. And Governor McCrory, and I guess in a bipartisan effort, he's put out a, uh, he added $5,000 to it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a reward 
for information for, for Mr. Moses is $15,000. Mm -hmm. Now you add or up to $15,000 to it, and you got it for $30,000. Oh, wow. You know, somebody uh, needs to right. call because here's, somebody knows something. Exactly. Here's, here's a poster uh, of them put out by the governors talking about the reward. Um, like it says, you know, up to $15,000. Here's the um, thing from the FBI. Well, this is a better shot. The FBI's put out a thing uh, in the, um, mm -hmm. the, the VICAP, the um, violent, whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there's, there's efforts to find Mr. Moses, but we, this, this case came up to, for to be on the show because we were talking last week about people just disappearing. Just, uh, it's just and amazing to me. Yeah, and uh, you, just you said you used the word. the face of the earth. Right, and you used the word eerie earlier, and I yeah. think that's, I mean, that's exactly what this is. The guy's stoves on, he's got, he's got no enemies, he's got no criminal record, he's got no Fixing drug Fixing the barbecue, there's Fixing evidence the barbecue, of that. Right. And he's just gone. So if, you know, people know, I, I mean, if the cops are out, if they're expending the effort and the money to go out and search areas around his home, then they probably know something about, you know, where he is. Just right. like the Travis Lynch case, they, mm -hmm. they look at it in certain places because that people have told him, sure. telling him that's where he is. So there's the, the number on the screen, up to $30,000 be a big payday for somebody. Absolutely, yes, um, and somebody knows something. So this will be on the internet, and the important thing is, Linda, we do have to go to break, but the important thing is we are worldwide. Right, absolutely. So whoever knows about this, whigtv.com, they could be watching it. Right, and, and, and worldwide, I, I get comments, I told you the other day, I, uh, people in Australia, people in England. I had now, a call from Texas. Right. Now, I doubt the guy in Australia knows about what happened to Mr. Moses, but, but I mean, we are, um, w once Brittany puts this on YouTube later right. this week, you know, and, and like you said, the, the website can be viewed. Yes. Um, the replay Absolutely. of this show is tomorrow, is tomorrow night at, at 8 in prime time, right? Uh, yes. You can tell us. That's I right. believe so. That's right. And then Tuesday comes on at 10. Yeah. So people can either watch the recap, they can catch it on YouTube, but you're right. I mean, the, 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 these cases are solved like this through publicity. That's and we're exactly doing the best right. we can to get the story out. That's right. Okay, we're going to go to break, come back with our guest right after this. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Welcome back to the K-Files. Uh, we have with us uh, J.P. Barnes. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see. Uh, my name is J.P. Barnes. I'm a retired trooper with the Highway Patrol. I live in the Bailey, Middlesex area. Uh, I grew up in southern Ashe County. Um, very active in the Boy Scouts. I've been a Scoutmaster in the Bailey area for almost 30 years. Love okay. the outdoors, love camping, love shooting. Okay. As a, as a trooper, what did you, I mean, like, um, I know I know y'all do a lot of patrol, 
But I mean, what else, what else did you do as a state trooper? I was assigned to motor carrier enforcement section of the Highway Patrol. I did a lot of commercial motor vehicle enforcement, did a lot of instructing for the Highway Patrol on the commercial motor vehicle side of the house. Awesome. Fantastic. All right, so uh, Brittany, put that wonderful picture up 10 years ago. There I am at the rifle range. Uh, well, the, the, the range, I guess, because it's a pistol, not a rifle. Um, tell me what's wrong with that picture. Right off the bat, I see a finger on the trigger, and that is a big no. Yeah. Um, I posted this picture on Facebook uh, about 10 years ago, very proud of myself, and a gazillion people pointed that <laughs> out. So, um, you know, it, it um, I, I was a, 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 one of the medals I received in the Navy that my kids get tired of me bragging about was I was uh, a marksman when I was in the Navy. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I, I actually can shoot, I mean, I actually can hit things when I try. But, um, you know, people, I, I wanted to show that picture because cause a lot of people who think they know things don't, don't know as much as they think they do. And then I think that um, carry and conceal is really important. And I, and I, and I think um, the more people who, who are, uh, who, who do carry legally, the better off we are. So, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing. You know, that's kind of today. We, me and Sandra we just had some questions for you that we know that um, you know how to answer given your law enforcement experience and all your instructor experience. Well, JP so. owns Barnes Safety and Consulting, correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, out in the Bailey area, as you said. So, um, and you do teach, instruct, um, instructor for concealed carry. Um, what are the benefits, JP, of having your concealed carry? What the benefits are, well, the sad and simple truth is law enforcement, we can't be everywhere, every second, of right. every minute of every day. We can't. Right. And you have an obligation to yourself and your family to keep yourself safe and your family members safe, your loved ones safe. Stop and think, when you pick the phone up to call 911, you don't know the response time. You don't know what else is going on in Nash County or around you. Mm -hmm. You have to have a measure right. in place to keep yourself protected. And that's, right. that's kind of the avenue that I push. Absolutely, because I know that's my priority. You know, hope is my husband's is to keep, and I think it is, to keep his family safe. I think that's what, you know, most people um, say. So um, what are some of the things in a concealed carry class you would learn? Well, we have a lot of shoot and don't shoot scenarios. I uh, have a lot of questions. And like I, we were discussing earlier, the number one question I get in class right out of the gate is, can I shoot somebody in my house? Yes. My viewers have always asked that question. And to answer that question with no other facts, the answer is no. You cannot shoot someone based on the sole fact that they are in your house. And the example I give to my class is, imagine that you're in the shower. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. You get out of the shower, you're drying off, you come out of your bathroom, you come through the kitchen wearing a towel, and there's a man sitting on your couch dressed like me in a suit and tie. He's got a little travel um, table. He's got a laptop open, and he's just punching away. You can't gun this man down. Mm -hmm. He sees you, you see him, you're screaming. He jumps up, throws his hands up, he's screaming. What you don't know is your neighbor across the street who just moved in she doesn't know her address yet. She's given her Farm Bureau agent or the wrong address. Said, look, I'm running late to our appointment. I'm gonna mm -hmm. leave the front door unlocked. He goes to the right house, the address that she gave him. Mm -hmm. The door is unlocked. He walks in. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he is not a threat to your safety. Mm -hmm. And that is why right. you cannot just gun down or use deadly force because someone's in your house, but Accident, guys, accidents happen. But that's what bothers me. How does the how does law enforcement know if I say yes, I felt threatened? Not in that scenario, but somebody breaks in my house, and I say yes, I felt threatened. Do they take my word for it? See, that's a hard. What would a person of ordinary firmness believe? Okay, several things come into play. The sheriff, does the sheriff really truly believe, uh, based on the evidence, the DA, he's going to weigh it. 
or a grand jury, right. your neighbors, are yeah. they going to believe that you were fearful, you, you were afraid for your life or for the safety of those in your care? Right. right. That's the measure you have to meet. What about your vehicle? Now, I had heard at one time, if, if you were in your vehicle in your driveway, if and, and somebody's vehicle, trying anywhere. to break in your vehicle, can you shoot somebody? Just trying to break in? Well, I'm in there. The property? No, I'm in there. If you're afraid for your life, okay, imminent danger to your life, serious death, injury, you can deploy deadly force. In a vehicle? In a vehicle. Okay. That's what I had, mm -hmm. had heard. Okay. All that's right. The, I mean, that's the key word. I, I was a... Um, I've been a security guard for since 92, I think, but I was armed guard for a while, and I mean, that was always what was taught, to, uh, fear for your life or the life of others. I mean, that's, that's the key words, I mean, because you can't, like you said, you can't just go around. There was a woman, I think, in Texas, a security guard in Texas, that uh, shot a man for stealing some steak. Yeah. He, was, he, he had stolen some steak and put it down his pants and was running out the door with it, and she shot him in the back three times. Yeah. You know, so a, a person has got to really, a person of ordinary firmness has got to agree that your decision to use deadly force was reasonable. None of us want to take another human being's life. Right. None of us. Right. Okay? Um, and if it's a situation you can remove yourself from and, you know, kind of de-escalate that situation, do that. But if you're face to face with a, an assailant and you have to use deadly force, you need to use deadly force. Mm -hmm. Don't hesitate. Right. Use it. Right. To save your life. That's exactly to right. To save your life or I, your I, family's life. I did a, a story down in Jacksonville several years ago where a man and woman were sitting on the couch watching TV and a naked man broke through the window. I mean, glass and all, just broke through the glass and all and, and started uh, uh, pretty much attacking the woman and the guy shot him dead. And there were some folks that seemed to be upset about that or whatever, but I never really had a problem with it because you know, well, I mean, well, you're sitting on your couch and you get attacked by a naked man jumping through the window. I mean, that, that would fit one of those scenarios, mm. good, right? Yeah, and, and what you might uh, feel threatened, she may not, or vice versa. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the situation I was explaining earlier. Imagine if you were getting out of the shower, same scenario, but you round the corner and there's a gentleman with pantyhose pulled over his head going through right. your drawer, and he begins to charge you in your living room. I would argue that if you were afraid for your life in that split second, mm -hmm. you can use deadly force. Right. Regardless if you saw a weapon or not. Right. A lot of people think you need to see a weapon. No. If you are in, if you are in fear for your life in right. that situation, he could strangle me to death. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's right. He could, you know, let's talk about women. Um, so a woman, a lot of women have never touched a gun. Mm -hmm. See a lot of that. About 85% of my students, right. female students, have never fired a weapon. But now they're hearing about concealed carry classes, you know, and things are not like they used to be. So women are wanting to, okay, I think I need to carry a gun. A man told me the other day, you know, do you have, he just asked me, Sandra, do you have a gun? So, you know, so there's concerns now that we need to have a gun. So. If a woman comes to your class, never had a gun, so you're going to work, walk them through it, work with them? Absolutely. Because they're going to have apprehension, of course. They are. And a lot of women like to network and do like uh, a private class. I get a lot of requests for small, private, women-only classes who have never shot, and we average one or two a month. Really? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, there a, um, is there a qualifying uh, shooting for, for the class? It is. You have to shoot a minimum of 30 rounds, 10 rounds from the 3, the 5, the 7 yard, and 21 of those rounds have to strike within the target zone of the, uh, of the target. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so I, I knew a police chief one time that um, he, he, got to, he couldn't be the chief no more because he couldn't shoot. I guess he got up there in age or whatever. And I, I was just curious about that. So, so it's not a, I mean, so, so the classes that you teach, they're, they're, they're not just, they're, I mean, they're getting the instruction, the, 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 like the stuff that we've been talking about, but they're also going out. And Absolutely. And, and we tend to work a lot of one-on-one -on -one with people who have never held or fired a weapon 
um, we kind of work with them a little bit more to, to ensure that we don't have a, an issue when it becomes time to qualify. Mm -hmm. um, and we also offer like basic pistol classes, uh, more defensive type pistol classes, rifle classes. We do a broad range of firearm classes, not just concealed carry. Right. Okay. Now, how would somebody sign up? Okay. We have a Facebook page. I do a lot of advertising um, with the Bargain Trader. I do mm -hmm. uh, advertising with you now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we have advertised in the Wilson Daily Times and other local newspapers, Spring Oak Enterprise. I um, appreciate that. And a lot of our business is just word of mouth. Mm hmm Right. Okay, so they um, could call your, what, what, how would they, I mean? A lot of people just text my 1-800 number or they text me directly um, and we pretty much just respond, okay. communicate through Facebook and uh, we get them where they need to be. Okay. Once you get that, is, is, is there any kind of like renewal situation with those? Or Every you five get? years you have to renew your permit with your home sheriff. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there, you, don't have, there, there, you don't have to go through training and all that again? It, it, as long as it does not lapse. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like in Wake County, I just had a student this past Saturday. Um, they live in Wake County. They contacted the sheriff in Wake County Monday. They can't even get in to submit their certificate until mid-August. And mm -hmm. then it's going to take 90 days to get their permit back. Wow. That's that's just how crazy. So go ahead and sign up yes. now if you want to. So what happens is you give them a certificate. Mm -hmm. They take that to the sheriff's office. Yes. And they get Fingerprint, fingerprinted. A background check. Background check. Um, their mental health records are evaluated. Okay. And the sheriff makes a decision as to proceed with issuing the permit or not. So the sheriff sees every permit? The sheriff himself issues the permit to carry concealed wow. in his county. That's pretty Yeah, he got to put his name on it. His, okay. his or her name on it. Wow. That's, that's pretty impressive. Well, you know, as I said, I've talked to a lot of people that want to, um, are interested. I need to get my concealed carry. So it's very easy to do so. Um, JP will be glad to help you. Barnes um, Safety and Consulting. Be glad to help you. Civic groups, you know. Yes, we uh, we actually reach out. We're doing one for uh, Sharpsburg Baptist Church this weekend. We get a lot oh, of Oh, and churches, groups. yeah. Yes. Churches, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sunday we school classes. We give them classes. a slight discount. Um, we'll come to them, bring everything. Price is all inclusive. Um, we train there. Uh, we give the instruction there. We shoot there. Wow. We'll travel anywhere in North Carolina to administer a private course. Um, and like I say, we do 150, 200 students a month. Now, what if they don't have a gun to bring? Do you it's have? It's like an additional $25. Um, so you have one they could. Firearm and ammunition, yes. Okay, all right. Because everybody don't have a gun. That's and right. Don't know if they want one until after the course, mm -hmm. I guess. So, okay. Well, very interesting. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. I, thank you. I'd like to. Um, sit in on one of those pretty soon. Please do. When, when you do that, and I, I can kill two birds with one stone, I can get some information for the show, and I can probably write a newspaper article about it. Yeah, well. that would be great, yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, sir. Thank appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, yep. and if anybody has any questions, they're gonna let me know, hopefully, and I'll give you a call and see if we can get them answered. Thank you for Anything having me. Anything about a concealed carry, okay. All right, we'll be right back right after this. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurers Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 
Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year-round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim. Well, welcome back. This show's gone fast. Yeah, it really has. Um, uh, a story I didn't even get a chance to tell when, when Mr. Barnes was here, because, I mean, it's really not relative, but I just like this story. Um, when I first got married many years ago, we lived in, in a... Uh, uh, I don't want to say bad neighborhood, but it was definitely not the safest place. And uh, this was down in the Wilmington area. And I used to, I, I had, at the time, I owned an old Moss, Mossberg shotgun. Probably hadn't been fired in 20 years, you know. But whenever I answered the door, I always answered the door holding the shotgun. I don't mean I was pointing <laughs> at nobody, but I mean, I always, you know, I had it by the barrel. I would always answer the door. Mm-hmm. You know? And one day a guy knocked on the door and I answered the door with the, you know, I said, can I help you? And he was like, can I borrow some dish detergent, uh, laundry soap? And I said, well, I don't have any laundry soap, so. So anyway, a couple days later, it come to find out that that guy had knocked on several oh, different Lord. doors asking for, you know, needing laundry soap. Yes. And the whole thing, he was casing the places. And just, just about everywhere that he knocked on that responded to whatever, that night or the night after, those folks got... They got broken into Right. It. But he see me with shotgun, so I deterred that whole criminal activity. Yeah, so, wow. So, and, and, and I have received an insurmountable amount of death threats over the years, especially from the Hells Angels. They don't, they really don't like me. And, and um, I do uh, keep a, a different shotgun. I got a Mossberg now that is, you know, like most, most shotguns are like that. This my right. first got double barrel, but they're stacked on top of each other. I don't have a, a pistol or carry concealed. I'll probably I need to do that. But if you come to the house, I do have a shotgun waiting on you. Well, yeah, I so, think I would. I think yeah, I have something as absolutely. well at my house. Um, we're about two weeks away from me launching this whole unidentified bodies thing. Yes. Right. So, so folks, if you didn't, if you missed last week or whatever, I'm just gonna really quickly explain what we're doing. Um, as I've said before, unsolved murders, the police, the, the, the law enforcement really latch on to those. Those are their, you know, their cases. Right. And, and uh, missing people, families, you know, if, unless you got a really terrible family, they're looking for mm -hmm. you. Um, and then the other third component to unsolved cases is you've got murders, missing people and then you've got unidentified bodies and North Carolina there was one that was just added in the last couple of days so we're up to 127 unidentified bodies throughout North Carolina mm -hmm. most of them are in this general area of eastern North Carolina mm -hmm. actually in your coverage area of, of uh, the 19 counties that that mm -hmm. is on, on cable or whatever so what we're gonna do is is we're gonna start looking at those cases individually and I found this out many years ago when I first started doing unsolved murders usually in a newspaper they'll pick like one case to highlight and then they'll just have a, a bullet point list of all right. the other cases you know if you know anything call this number mm -hmm. well years ago I started taking <coughs> those, those cases and, and looking at them individually mm -hmm. and to, to some a lot of success in some areas and in some cases you just you know it's it's you, you, whatever so that's what I'm gonna do with these unidentified bodies and I'm gonna turn it into a multimedia project because we're gonna I'm going to we're going to the Wilson Times has agreed we're gonna publish it in the newspaper right we're gonna talk about it on here right and we're gonna uh, put photos uh, crime scene photos and, and and a lot of folks there's there's some pictures that probably I know the newspaper's not going to run them. Probably don't want to see them on here. Right. But they do need to be seen because they're, 
Well, I mean, for instance, there's a, a, a body they found in the um, ocean that had been chewed up by sharks. It's pretty, pretty disgusting to look at, but there's some identifiable tattoos on the body. You know, so that's the only way, at this point, the only way to identify this body are those tattoos. So when that comes I up, I will direct y'all to where on the internet you can find those if you want to see them. And, and that comes to where we're at and why I'm doing this, and that is um, publicity is really the main way to solve these 20, 30, 40-year-old cases. Oh, yeah. Now, in a lot of them, there's, there's DNA that has been done. Um, I, I wrote about the, 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 the skull that was found in Buckhorn Reservoir. I wrote about that for the Wilson Times a few weeks ago. They sent out DNA in 2011, and they still haven't got an answer back. That, see, so, you know, you, there's major problems in that lab. Right, and, and, and you know, uh, DNA is great, but it's, it's you know, I, I know I've said this before, but I, it bears repeating. People always talk about circumstantial evidence. Oh, you know, that's a circumstantial case. You know, like somehow the circumstantial cases are weaker, you know, when they're not. Mm -hmm. But DNA is a circumstantial piece of evidence. It, right. You know, people think that it's, that it's uh, direct evidence when it's not mm -hmm. because DNA, just like fingerprints, shows that someone was there, right? Right. But it doesn't show, it doesn't prove motive, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't prove uh, any of the factors that you need to get a murder conviction. Right. So I think because of like, t you know, TV shows and whatnot, people just assume that, oh, if there's DNA, then it's a done deal. Right. But it's really not. It's, it's no different than fingerprinting. I mean, if you've got... If you got a fingerprint on the window seal of someone's house who was murdered, well, then you've got some pretty good evidence, right? Why? But you still have to explain, or the defense will have an opportunity to explain how that fingerprint got there. Yes. Same thing with DNA. So DNA is great, right? Don't get me wrong, folks. DNA is great. And DNA in these cases are great, these, un these unidentified body Why? cases. But what helps more than anything is publicity. Oh, and, sure, yes. And, and what we're, no doubt about it. What we're coming across and what we're seeing, what I'm seeing, I, I said we like I'm some kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, crazy people use we a lot. They do? Yeah, they say, like when they write stuff. Uh-oh, when, when I say we, I'm going to start getting paranoid. Yeah, well, you should. Because yeah. you know, like on Facebook or, or, or just anywhere, or when they write up manifesto or whatever, they, they use we. <laughs> A lot when well, there's only there's only one person, but they say we like there's some kind of movie. God. Anyway, I digress. Um, the these cases. Okay, so so I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way too. I'm, I'm trying to set all this up so when we start, we can just hit the ground running. Yes. Namus is the national uh, missing persons and unidentified persons network. Namus. Uh huh. You know the government and their uh, abbreviations. So anyway, um, it started in 2008, or uh, 2007 it was like in the, the but, but 2008 when they really started putting cases right. in there. So the thing about NamUs is it's really great, and I, I mean, I, 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 I bug those people all the time, you know, they've got good information on there, but uh, NamUs started in 2008, so all the cases of, of unidentified people before that nationwide had no centralized database. In other words, you, you I mean, you might have a missing person in Charlotte, right? Mm -hmm. And there be an unidentified body in Raleigh. But right. The two, the two folks didn't know, they, they weren't communicating. Right. So the unidentified body might be the missing person from Charlotte. So the, the name was databases, and there was some volunteer people. I don't want to undercut these people. There was the Doe Network, you know, was set up to, by by volunteers years before Namus was. Right. So the goal is to get information about unidentified people out there. Yeah. So sure. That, I mean, because if you've got, let's, I mean, for instance, we got some we got some identified bodies along I ninety five, 
and I-40. Do people throw bodies that's, out yes, that's along what, the interstate? That's what I, was about I mean, to say. is that what they do? Travel yes. somewhere miles down the road yes. on the interstate and just absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to get into those. There's several of that's, those. There's there's one where a, a, a girl was thrown out on on I I believe it was I I oh, I-85. I know for for a fact I-85. I think in Guilford County, but we'll get to the, you know I'll have the details. Uh. But anyway, she's dumped out on the side of the road and she has on a pair of socks right the socks are clean right so uh you know if you walk on socks they get dirty right the bottom of your socks get dirty or whatever so so to me someone that what that says is someone pulled off the interstate dumped her out she rolled down a hill and they didn't find her until she was a skeleton right so but the socks are clean the bottom of the socks are clean so when criminals do that and they're not stupid Right. I mean, when 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 they anytime they can cross a jurisdictional border, yeah, it's better for them. Oh yeah. So if they kill a girl in South Carolina, and they jump on the freeway, yeah, and drive up halfway through North Carolina and dump her body out, right, then they've crossed several jurisdictions, and it's going to complicate things wow. when it comes time to investigate. Yeah, that's true. So, so what what the situation is is. When NamUs came online in 2008, law enforcement started adding cases to it, you know, which is great. But the but those cases hadn't received any publicity since like 1975, right? So you've got cases that that are out there, but they're not right. really out there. You know, what I mean, you can yeah. go find them, but you have to go, you have to want to go look exactly. for that case, you know. But pu what publicity does is when we start to put these cases out there and we put them on the internet and everything, it adds more of a, when Absolutely. someone goes searching, like let's say there, um, we saw in the Crisp case how his granddaughter grew up and she's now pushing to solve that case. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see that you have to, you have to have the material there when someone comes mm -hmm. to look for it. And that's what right. we're going to do. We're out of time. We are out of time. It, the show did go fast. It we're did. Gonna, um, next week, um, Fred is going to. We're going. We're going. He's going to be the guest next week because I've got some railroad cases where oh. people have died on the railroad tracks. And oh, I'm going to pick wow. his brain about, about that. Will be fun. Because oh, because Fred the Weatherman used to be a, a railroad. Yes, cop, he worked so, for the railroad. railroad yeah, so we're going to talk about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then uh, Edgecombe County and Rocky Mount second and third Thursday of the month. So yes. things, are, things are taking shape. Yes, they are. And don't forget, you can watch us, if you can't watch us on TV, WHIGTV.com worldwide, we are. Yep. So watch us on the web. Um, don't forget, 406-6736, if you know anything about any of the cases that we ever talk about, um, up to $15,000 paid out. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. You know. If you recently lost your job and your health coverage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and you think you may be eligible for Medicare, you probably have more questions than answers right now. Statewide Insurance Group, All Things Medicare, can help you with that. We can provide the guidance and the answers that you need to get the benefits you may be eligible for. Don't let this time of uncertainty jeopardize your eligibility for your Medicare benefits. Remember. Relationships matter. Call Statewide Insurers Group today for the answers that you need now. 316-8166. Being prepared and trained is the best way to keep your family safe. The best way to be prepared is to learn from those who've spent a lifetime protecting us. Barnes Safety and Consulting LLC offers concealed carry classes with instructors who are law enforcement officers active and retired with more than 100 years of law enforcement experience. Monthly classes are taught year round with private classes and special group rates available. Classes are $75 and held in the Bailey area. Call or text 1-800-653-0643. Get your concealed carry permit and avoid becoming a victim.